Hi there guys and thanks for tuning in once again. Uh, in today's lesson we're going to talk about Mr. Nicholas Slonimsky and I'm going to present to you some of his uh, concepts. Uh, you might have heard about his book, uh, Thesaurus of Scales and Melodic Patterns. Uh, if not, that's something I urge you to check out. Uh, this lesson is not going to be me showing you a bunch of cool licks or patterns or exercises as such. Uh, but rather I'm going to give you a few concepts that hopefully you can apply to your own style and genre of music, the way you play. Uh, and hopefully it's going to give you some new and fresh inspiring ideas. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay guys, we're going to start this lesson without the guitar in our laps. And why, you might ask, we're guitar players, we want to shred, we want to play. Uh, I wanted to start by showing you uh, this book, once again, uh, The Thesaurus of Scales and Melodic Patterns by Slonimsky, that was written back in the 1940s, I think. So it's uh, almost 80 years uh, old. Uh, and some of the guys that have been using this one throughout the years are uh, Frank Zappa, uh, John Coltrane, Alan Holdsworth, some of my personal heroes have been using this book um, and that was the reason why I got interested in it in the first place. And when Slonimsky wrote this book, he didn't really have guitar players in mind. Um, but uh, there was a person named uh, Dave Salentano, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, uh, who rearranged the Slonimsky book for guitar players. And he probably figured that some of us aren't very good uh, sight readers when it comes to standard notation. So he even included tablature in the book, which is a great thing. And I will show you uh, some links. I will put some links in the description box below where you can get this book. Now, what I want to do with this book is um, basically telling you how I have been using it and uh, the way I interpret this book. I'm sure there are a lot of ways that you can look at this book and read it and interpret it. But I'm going to share you some of my uh, personal experiences with this book. Um, and I also have to give a big shout out to um, a good friend of mine and a keyboard player, piano player named Lale Lawson, uh, who's been helping me in decoding this book because it can be a handful to understand what's in this book. Uh, so I'm going to post a link to his uh, YouTube channel below as well. You've got to check him out. He's an amazing musician. Uh, so this book is, like I said, it's not a bunch of um, licks and exercises, but rather musical and theoretical concepts of scales and melodic patterns that we can hopefully use uh, in creative ways using our own musicality and own creativity. Um, and that's, I think, how Slonimsky wanted us to interpret this book and to view it. Um, so we're going to dive deep into some of the concepts in this book. Okay, let's do that now. Okay, so now we're nicely zoomed in on the guitar. And I wanted to begin by briefly explain uh, the Slonimsky principle in the book and that is to divide one or several octaves into equal parts. What I mean with that is that if we take an octave uh, in Western music that will give us a total of 12 tones like this. Uh, the chromatic scale basically. So going from this E to the E on the 12th fret, that's an octave. Uh, now we can divide this octave into equal uh, intervallic uh, points. Uh, let's say we divide an octave into um, four equal points. That will give us a interval of a minor third. So going from E to G, up to B flat, up to D flat or C sharp, and to the next E. So, 
Now some of you might recognize that sound as the diminished scale or a diminished sound going up in minor thirds and that is completely correct. Uh, what if we do the same thing but this time we're gonna split an octave into four uh, or three I should say uh, equal parts. Um, that would give us an interval of a major third. So E, A flat, C, and E. And that is what a lot of people would refer to as the augmented sound. Okay, moving on. Where do we go from here? Uh, the next step that is presented in the Slonimsky book is to add more notes to what we just did. Uh, so we can either add notes before or after our target notes. And what I mean by target notes are, for example, the uh, minor third division points. So let's say we wanted to add a note after each target point uh, in the minor third division, uh, the diminished ones. That would give us this kind of sound. So E, F, G, A flat, B flat, B, uh, D flat, D, and E. And some of you may think right now, okay, well that, isn't that the diminished half whole symmetrical scale? Yes, it is. So, you see, now we're starting to get into some, maybe some familiar territory here. Now, of course, we can take this and expand this, these concepts on um, the other division points as well, such as the uh, major third ones that I showed you earlier. But that's something I'm gonna let you do on your own. Um, take your time with this and explore and see what you can come up with. Uh, you can, for example, divide an octave into six equal parts, uh, giving you a set of whole steps. Uh, some of you refer to this as the whole tone scale. Okay, so moving on. Um, so one of the questions I very often get from students when I teach this is uh, how can I use these concepts that I just showed you? How can I use that in my daily playing? And how can I incorporate that in a musical context? Uh, and of course, there's no right or wrong answer to this question, but much more a musical preference and uh, it's really up to you how you want to interpret this and how you want to apply this on the guitar and how you want to use it in a musical situation. Uh, so my best advice for that is to just play around with these ideas that I show you and uh, see what you could come up with. Well now, you may wonder, is there more to this? Well, let me start off by saying, so far we've only scratched the surface of what's presented in the Slonimsky book. Uh, and for my last example today, uh, I'm gonna show you a concept where we start dividing two octaves into equal parts. So that's coming next. Two octaves, you say. Is there no end to this madness? Well, uh, in the last examples, we did a division of one octave. That was 12 tones. That's one octave. So now we're gonna do two octaves. So from this low E up to that E. Uh, so, and that's a whole number of 24 notes. 
Now we're starting to get into some more advanced stuff here. So bear with me. Uh, so for the last example I'm going to show you, uh, we're going to take two octaves and divide it in uh, division groups of three. Uh? And uh, to make this even more interesting, we're going to change key from E to A. So in A, this is going to be our starting note. And then we're going to do one octave and another octave. So that's two octaves. So that means from this note to this note, going up chromatically, we got 24 notes. So we're going to divide that into uh, three equal division points. And that will leave us a distance of minor six intervals. So a minor six from A is F. And minor six from F is D flat or C sharp. And then we have the octave, which is a minor six away from D flat, which is another A. Well, all right. Now that we got these division points, what can we do with that information? Well, let me show you a thing that I came up with just from fooling around with this ID. Uh, we're going to start off with the Aeolian scale, the natural minor scale. So very slow in A, it would look like this. That was just one octave. Uh, and looking at the intervals, we got root, second, minor third, fourth, fifth, minor sixth, the dominant seven, and then the octave. Oh, wait a minute. Did I just say the minor sixth? Yes, I did. And that was the thing we talked about earlier when we divided the two octaves into three parts. That was a minor six apart, right? Right, so that's something we can use to our advantage with this. Right, the way we're going to do this is we're going to use the Aeolian scale and we're going to start off by playing five notes of the scale in the key of A. So, right, we land on the E. Now the next interval is a minor sixth and that's going to be our new reference point. So from the F, we're going to start playing F Aeolian, so F minor. So we're going to change key from A minor to F minor. So putting those two together. Okay, our next stop is D flat, which is the next division point of the two octave division point in three, uh, leading us to D flat. So we're going to play the D flat minor scale. And then we come up to the root note again, the A, which is the second octave, and we can play the second and the minor third. So to recap very quickly what I was doing, I was playing A minor, five notes, F minor, five notes, and D flat minor, five notes. So together it sounds like this. Okay, that's all we have time for for today. Uh, if any one of you would be interested in um, having me making a part two of this lesson where I further expand on this concept, uh, please let me know by dropping a comment in the comment section below. And also if you have any questions or thoughts or own ideas, feel free to post them as well. I would love to interact with you all. Uh, and if you already haven't, um, please uh, subscribe and 
uh, sign up for my channel and hit the little bell notification button. Uh, that's always highly appreciated. So with that said, I will leave you for now and I'll see you next time. Bye.